Good luck. All right, this marks, I believe, week three of the Tourney to Master series. Uh, we are going to play our favorite opening, which happens to be our opponent's favorite opening. Ooh, this should be dramatic, right? Um, so, yeah, let's close this diagonal before I cause too much drama. Uh, I'm going to boost the audio volume slightly. I'm not sure exactly what's up with my speakers, but that volume boost should work. All right. So, typically I end up playing my Rook to the Third file. And I know Abigail is our resident Third file Rook opening specialist. Um... However, I know if I focus, I can read very well. So I should see what it is I can do to get a position that's sort of familiar, and then focus once we get there. Um, it is somewhat troubling to me that the Sprook and Bishop are poised exactly the way that I would set this up on a different shogi site, and I've had great success setting things up that way. So I'm just a little concerned that I might miss something here. Um, hmm. Okay, yeah, I do want to play my Rook to the third file, regardless of having spent an extra move on this pawn move. Right, so this is the move I was most concerned slash alarmed about. Um, however, I can play Twin Gold Castle against this without fear. But also, I think it I survive regardless. As long as bishop f5 does not completely wipe me out, I think I'm okay. Um, there's some tricky line where the bishop ends up on f5, this pawn advances, and if I've played improperly, this point drops. Or rather, the lance drops behind it. I just don't want to end up in whatever that configuration was, but I don't remember what that was. Um, I don't recall. We're going to play Twin Gold Castle because I don't recall how to play this the correct way. But also, well, it's too late for me to build Boat Castle on the left because I've clearly made a different shape here. Welcome. So, in chess, this is where I would do pawn takes pawn without much thought. In shogi, I should be a bit more patient. What I've been contemplating is bringing my silver up to 4-4. Four, four. Um, or 4-6. Four,
understanding that the pawn drop will occur here, but it's okay. The concern is that this bishop could come out and check me from the side unless I push my edge pawn, in which case I'm actually safe. Um, yeah, we're going to use the king to defend this point. So we're going to keep the rook back here and not give the rook a free tempo to go up and then back to this rank. Um, meanwhile, my silver has aspirations to play silver four six. Which could well occur. They could end up pawn. They could drop another pawn on three six, and this could get unpleasant. But it's nothing that I should be alarmed about, as I usually get really concerned if there's something this close to my king, unless I understand it well. So. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> right, there's another reason I can't take this pawn, and that's that this looks super ultra mega loose. Um not sure what I should do about that. My rook is impeded by my pawn. So let's advance the pawn. But yeah, I need to proceed with caution. I want to keep the silver and gold connected so that at some point I can push my fourth foul pawn and bring up this silver toward the center with speed. Oh. Are they playing this rook up anyway? They are. Interesting. Uh, well, certainly it would be very difficult for me to play Mino Castle here. Um, I don't think Mino Castle is required anymore. Well, this is going to get spicy. Um, so if the rook wanders over here, my bishop will strike it eventually. Um, hmm. This is such a strange position, because there are so many loose pieces. Well? Oh. <laughs> oh, this is one hell of a transposition. All right. Uh, here we go. What is the point of this move, you ask? Hmm. Oh, there is a purpose. Um, all right, I missed that, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, maybe. Hopefully. I don't know. 
Damn. Would have been nice if I'd seen that. Um... Hmm, I played a little bit too hastily. Alright. What the hell do I do now? Do I just assert my king is safer than yours and never back it up? Or do I come up with some way to back that assertion up? Oh, well, okay, there is a fun tactic here. Uh, we do enjoy our fun tactics from time to time. So, let's see how they react to this. You want to fight? We're going to fight now. It'll be fun. Maybe. <laughs> okay. The tactic is that I'm going to push that pawn again. Now you might question, where is the value in pushing the pawn once more? Hmm. Indeed. Like, doesn't that just lose the pawn? Maybe. Shogi is such a rich game. Now, I could be completely misreading this, and this could be sealing my doom, but I don't know, I got a good feeling about it. <laughs> could be sealing my demise. It also looks kind of fun. Give him something to think about. So in addition to this being a tourney to master game, also I'm at the threshold for this rating category, so if I play a little bit too loose, a little bit too sloppy, I will derank. Um, you know, we'll just find a way to rank back up later sometime. But uh, we'll do the best we can to read this. So I'm just saying there's a little bit of pressure on me to win this. On the other hand, I think my castle is somewhat more sound than that of my opponent. They did spot a very interesting tactic because I was... I needed to pay better attention to their threats. Although they, I did pay attention to their threats where my king was at, so maybe that's all that matters this game. Okay, I could drop the foreshadowing a bit. Um, so if they just simply take the pawn the exchange bishops, and then I drop my bishop forking gold and rook. That's my idea. So, and it could be a flawed idea, because maybe that's not a good square for the bishop. So I should still pay attention and see if there are other bishop drops available. Even though that one does look awfully tempting. Um, like, alternatively, I could threaten to, or I could offer a rook trade, threatening the pawn behind their rook. So that's another possibility. And if their dragon moves away, then I could take the pawn on 
8.3. So. But yeah, I think we are definitely on the cutting edge of something here. I've probably pushed the envelope just a little bit too far. But it's not the first time I've lost material in the first 20 moves, so we'll deal with it. I guess a mature response was what he was suggesting, that he just defend against my attack, and that I'll have to come up with another attack. So what's my next attack going to be? Like I said, offering a rook trade's not a terrible thought. I might keep losing pawn after pawn doing such offers, but um, my king is kind of safe. Yeah, also the dragon could move to attack my gold and attack my pawn. I'm not sure how I'd react to that. Like, my impulse is that I'd like to either offer an exchange of rooks or would like to something uh, attack their dragon again. But okay, down the rabbit hole we go. Um, I think he's calling my bluff. He's probably right to do so. But okay, so if I exchange bishops and then I could drop the bishop here hitting the knight, they could block the diagonal. I could offer rook exchange, or I could offer rook exchange first. They hit my gold, I move my silver up, this dragon moves somewhere I take here. It's another possibility. Um, I think everything here starts with the bishop exchange, because I don't have any other options. So let's get that taken care of. Next, my rook is blocked. So I could either threaten the gold and the dragon, and that would force an exchange, and I'm not better there. Well, if the exchange is forced, I could drop the rook up here. They could reply with some kind of rook drops. No, they can't. Uh, yes, I get a dragon. So why not bishop 9-6? Bishop 9 6, dragon takes rook, uh, gold takes, or dragon takes knight, bishop takes here, promotes. Um, I'm too curious, I need to know. Please show me. Alright, this will be fun. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm somewhat concerned or afraid about that, but sure, let's do it. Uh, 
Well, their options are a bit limited this turn due to the severity of my attack. Yeah, and I, I mean, that seems like the right move to me. This might also be possible. But either way, they've got to defend. Oh, there could be more than one defense, couldn't there? There could be some... I don't know if there is an attacking counter defense or a counter attacking defense, but um, for sure I've got a threat. Yeah, I thought this might happen. So I'm pretty sure I just want to step away and make an attack and have more attacks to follow. A horse is an excellent defensive piece, a bishop not so much. Yeah, so we're going to attack the silver general with gain of tempo. Next, we could offer a Rook Exchange with Gain of Tempo. Next, we could drop a Gold, but that doesn't really gain a Tempo. But anyway, these are possibilities. They do have a Knight in hand, so I do need to be a bit careful. Could take a Knight in hand. It's tempting, but also offering a Rook Exchange and taking where they've not yet defended seems like the faster move here, um, since it defends against... Well, it doesn't defend against every Rook drop. There's one that's not defended. If we exchange Rooks and they drop here, um, uh, I could drop here to counter it. We exchange, they drop on the back rank. I trap the rook. So I survive if I exchange here. It would be nice to attack right next to their king. Yeah, this dragon and knight and potential pawns that are going to storm in have me a bit spooked at the moment. So... I think exchanging dragon and rook is the correct play here. Then if they offer, if they drop here, I can drop my rook. They're forced to exchange. And then if they drop behind my silver, I can trap the uh, rook and win it. So this deals with their dragon threat. Unless they take my lance and then I get to take here and we're in a different game. Yeah, so they take my lance. I continue with my... Oh, shit. <laughs> they have a lance. This is how Shogi works, Stan. Uh, right. All right, well, I'm going to derank, probably. Because I've made this mistake on several occasions. Uh, that's pretty cool. I always wanted a lance, though. Alright. 
Um, hmm. All right. Well, we're going to get a lance. It's going to be fine. It's not the first time I've had to survive against an overwhelming material deficit. Mm. Yep. That notion that you can use a piece that you just captured that's not immediately in your hand is one of the things that just forever startles me about this game. It's a beautiful thing, but my goodness, it's startling when you're not expecting it. Um, I was so fixated on trying to win their king. Trying to show off while doing it. Serves me right. So, what the hell can I do now? Lances are most effective from a distance, so I could put my lance back here. Um, okay, that's interesting. Right. Um, This is curious. So, this point here is not something I want to contest. I want these pieces, really. Um, I'm running very low on material at the moment. That's not going to improve at any second here. So, I'll take here. After some reasoning, this seems to be the best thing I could do with this token. Just prepare the way for my next pawn to advance. Now you might say, hey, that doesn't look very useful, and you'd be right. Um, but I have another idea. I'm going to need lots of ideas for some kind of miracle to happen here. Um, I want to remove this knight. I only see one way I could threaten to remove it. It's so ugly. Well, no, I could just take it directly. That's lighter than committing an entire piece, but like I like the tempo gain on hitting this. It'd have to move. It moves and then I haven't gained anything. So I don't like this, but I'm doing it anyway. Oh, welcome everyone. Sorry we're in emotes only mode. We're playing tourney to master round three against Abigail. I just dropped a rook. 
because I was so fixated on attacking that I forgot how this game works. Um, so we're going to see if I can manage some kind of a miracle attack to come back from this mess that I created. It doesn't look good. But you never know. That's why we play the game. This is a cursed shape moving the gold up diagonally. I've done it. It's still a cursed shape. But it does gain one tempo at least temporarily. If I'd run sideways, then like everything collapses immediately, so I can't do that just yet. But yeah, they just promote the night, and, like what can I do? Not much. Mm -hmm. Well, hang on. Hang on. I could chase this dragon. This dragon's not got far... Oh, okay, well, yeah, I would hit this gold and I can't support the gold. I was imagining things. I cannot support this gold general. Um, hmm. Alright, we're going to continue with my original plan. Which is just take this here. I'll allow them to take my silver. I take this silver, and hopefully something positive happens. But also, yeah, I guess the silver could run twice, protect the gold, and then it's exposed, and you'll find some other way to dissolve this. But for now, um, this seems to be the plan. And once I remove this silver, then I can attack from both sides. I've got a night drop threat. Maybe somehow I could make this interesting, despite still being down a rook like a dum dum. Uh, so we've taken a knight. Hmm, what fun things can we do with the knight? This looks fun. Let's do it. <laughs> they want to take it, but does this reduce the pain? I don't know. Or does it just allow me to attack elsewhere? Would it be running from a fork to take this? Hey, 
Answer, of course, this is running from a fork, but, I mean, this is how we play. It's exciting. So, yeah, we're going to take this, probably drop a silver here, gold there, gold here, something like this. Move this horse out, hit the dragon. They've got nothing to block on this diagonal anymore because the silver is gone. Um, if we could spook this bishop sufficiently far away, maybe we have other threats. I don't know. It all starts with this. I guess if they take that silver, they could block with the silver they just captured. Again, I forget how this game works. Mm. That's kind of an issue. <laughs> I'm annoyed how effective that is. <laughs> uh, okay. Sanjubio I want to checkmate in the middle of the board, but I don't have four pieces attacking. I can't get a fourth attacker there quick enough. So I need to play a defensive move like this. Yeah, I said earlier on a couple occasions a horse is not a great defensive piece. And here I am trying to use it. Or not a good attacking piece. And here I am trying to use it as an attacker and it's not working. Right, so they've committed this distant from my king. Um, so now I'm actually empowered to go back here and snap the remaining knight. I don't think there's another in-between move here. Oh, this is more interesting than I thought it was. Because I don't have to do silver takes knight. I could do gold takes knight. Hmm. I didn't realize just what an interesting move that is. Huh. Okay, well now we know. Um... We might gradually get our rook back. That, strictly speaking, I mean, I, it seems to lose a tempo compared to the alternative. Um... It's 
Depending how much I really want a dragon, I could drop my gold close-ish to this dragon. Oh. Okay, well they oblige. I'm very appreciative. Um, okay. They have a knight attacking. I need to be careful that they don't get four pieces attacking. Right now it's just a knight. Later it'll probably be a lot more. Um, So this is the weak point now. Sanjudio I'm not reasoning properly. Checking is chasing. Um, and I want to hit the head of this knight with my pawn, but there's just no way to do it with this bishop here. So we chase. But also this might do something. I'm not sure what. Checking is chasing. I shouldn't have done that. But that's my chess player impulse. When I can't find an idea, we make an idea. And now that I look closer at all of this, I'd consider bringing the silver up, but then there's a lot of threats here. So retreating silver might be not a bad thing. Um, because it prevents them from attacking on this wing. <sighs> this is confusing. And I did not do myself any favors. Uh, Yeah, so we retreat. We are under massive attack and have a pretty poor defense. Let's see if we can generate something positive from all this. What could I do? Oh, this is now slightly weaker than it used to be because the king's not there anymore. Should just take the lance. Hmm. All right. 
Didn't expect that. Don't need foo. That's clever. I'm in trouble. I'm having to play a defensive rook. I am in trouble. That's not correct. That rook was much scarier in other positions. I wanted to bring my silver forward. I get to do that now. I mean, yeah, I could still have to play another defensive rook if they check me here. But, like, there's. My position was extremely prone. And now the silver covers more squares. So this is not as much of a disaster as the previous position was. But also, maybe if they check, I just block with the gold. And drop my rook back here and try to... No, I can't mate. Not even close. Not even close. Well, I'm sure there are some advantages to that move. Um, Yeah, that does bust up my castle. So we'll break my castle. We'll take my knight out. We're definitely under attack at this point. No question about that. We're still under attack. Opponent's attack intensifies. Um, Yeah, no, that's correct. That's a sensible way. Each time you do this, you're giving one piece to me. Um, but I think that's the right way to go. Sanju Dio Yonju Dio Goju Dio Itch Ni San 
YOLO, here we go. My king is tired of staying put. It's magical journey time. It is so magical journey time. Um, so I mentioned how I might have to block the rook here. I still might have to do that. Um, but yeah, my silver in the center supports an attack toward the center. So as much as... Do I have a better attack? I really don't Thank like you, this. My rook is not a very good attacking piece here. We're just going to add it to the pyre and pray that things will turn out okay. Oh. Curious. Um... I mean, okay, yes, you are winning and some material, yes. Um, My king is a giant. He fights his own battles. Show yourself, knight. Mm -hmm. I thought so. Let me check my overlay. Oh, sorry about that. Properties. I'm so sorry. I did not have this filtering correctly. Let's toggle that. So at least we can enjoy the remainder of this game. You kind of knew where my pieces were at, but it doesn't hurt to show you. Um, yeah, let's, let's go out fighting this. Alright, we've taken all their pieces. They need four attackers. They have four in hand. Is four in hand the same? Is it going to be enough for them to succeed? Last few moves I looked at this, so which is why I hurried this time. Um. Yeah, oh, really looks fine now again. Sorry about that. Oh, that's interesting. It's not where I would have dropped it, but I can see the logic behind that, sure. If they had a bishop, I would be a bit more concerned. So I should take this, and I should run. Now where's the safest direction for me to run? Um, I think back into my improvised castle is probably safest. Up the board is usually best, but I see risks here with that. Yeah, let's go back toward our improvised castle, and hopefully this is okay. Mm 
And I just need to be careful not to trade a million pieces here. As such would be dangerous. Ah. All right, there are other things for me to be concerned about. This is so close, but I don't think they have mate. Um, so my gold can move up to defend the head of my king. And we'll see if I survive or not. I forgot they could obtain one more piece of thing on demand when they want it. That could skew this whole calculus. Interesting. Obviously, I cannot capture. Um... Also, obviously, there's only one move here. But one move seems to be enough. All right, should we build Mino Castle now? Put a gold here, a silver there, and put the king in the corner. Doesn't look like a terrible idea. It's a strangely timed idea, but... Um, I need to be careful to not get mated here while scheming of such castles. Um... Yeah, because this is a dangerous position. <laughs> this is such a dangerous position. So I need to exercise care in attack and in defense. I blocked my pawn, which was not smart. Um, Evaluating everything I could find, I think this is the best I can manage. Placing closer to the king seemed too close somehow. Um... Yeah, whatever their threat is, I've just... I'm not seeing it. Oh! Oh, that's clever. Well... Is it... So if they drop here, I can run away. If they drop here... I'm out of running options, but I don't need to run. So...
30秒40秒 Yeah, my mind is not operating as it needs to. Oh, is this checkmate? That looks very checkmatey. Interesting. I did not anticipate that. Uh, yeah, there seems to be no way out. Nicely played. Thanks for the game. Alright, so they take the game. Uh, actually, appears I wasn't at the rating threshold. Huh, how about that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can read fairly well, but um, blunders occur because I need to read better. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I know it's pretty late for Abigail. Okay. I'll try to identify some position where we can start analyzing from. Because this is the opening phase, I don't really know that I could learn too much, but uh, okay. Well, I guess part of it's that we both play this very attacking style. And I need to defend just slightly better so that I don't get massacred. Um, I think that has something to do with it. Um, but yeah, this is a good point. And to this threat, I probably need to do something. I need to spend one tempo doing something about this before I do whatever it is I do on the right side of the board. Yeah, because I've fallen for this several times before. You'd think I would remember it. Uh, in this case, I just didn't. And I pushed the envelope. Yeah, I guess part of it is... yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to spend one move defending before I do something. Yeah. Absolutely, I need to do this. Um, so after the after I miss this, it becomes very difficult for me to do anything. That's an interesting play. Um, wow, that is sharp. I guess it's playable. It's kind of crazy. But who knew? Uh, that is such a play. It saves the tempo. So yeah, they can afford to do this. So I've probably messed up earlier at this point in the game, but um, yeah, so they, after what I did play, they get this very nice advantage and there's just no way I can defend against their direct threat. Yeah. This drop, I don't really like it, because um, even in the best case, it doesn't seem... Even in the best case, it just doesn't seem like the greatest thing I can do. Um, I really don't like where this is at. Um, so, like, you have threats of this stuff. 
So I'm not sure that what I did is even that good. Yeah, I suppose so. I suppose this is a bit dangerous. Yeah. I mean, if I had a pawn in hand, that would be one thing for sure. Um, I don't... It's just surprising. Anyway, yeah, they take here. I get this gold general. I get stubborn. Mm. There must have been something better I could do. Um, I get way too carried away by this, and there's just... I've blundered repeatedly in the first few moves of the game, and so now I'm down a rook. But I have an attack. It's just... yeah. What can I do at this point? Um, um, <laughs> so, I mean, maybe I try something like this. Because that is the weakness. Um, and yeah, it's true that we face this sort of stuff. So I get my pawn back in hand. So I don't think that's what he's aiming for here. On the other hand, like maybe this isn't even my best play. Um, but yeah, it looks... I don't know. Like, there's no reason for them to take the token right away. Even though it's scary. I think they're fine, somehow. I'm not sure what the move is, but, like, I enjoy having these pieces in hand. I just don't know what I would do with them. I feel like, somehow, there's got to be something uh, Gota can do, but I'm not sure what. Yeah, just a bit. Um, so back to this position. Um, actually, back to where was it? Here. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no hurry to take the rook, right? Um, well, I don't see, oh. Nah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Because on the one hand, you want to feel like you're in control of the position, but that's just not how Shogi is. Like, there's got to be some devastating tactic here somewhere. Um, hmm. I don't know. But they did take. And, I mean, potentially I should lance drop back here. Um, so, okay, and if I defend, I don't know. But, like, just I don't see the need to take the token. I tend to get in trouble a lot for just ignoring threats, so, like, take my advice with a grain of salt, but... Uh, yeah, but, like, what about something like this? Or, I don't know. It feels like there's got to be something here. Or you just ignore that for a little bit, make a threat elsewhere and somehow come back and collect it. <laughs> yeah. 
I guess we'll just agree to disagree on that. Or he would prefer to take this right away. Yeah, maybe I should have tried this uh, defense with the lance. Oh, actually, wait. Well, no, they can't pawn drop if they already pawn dropped. Um, she's. Yeah, I guess so. I wonder, maybe something like this then. Something to prevent me from getting this infinite factory thing going. Hmm. I guess we'll take a look. So, sure. Um, oh man, it feels like there's got to be a, a mate threat here already. Um, says the person who can't find mate in three. <laughs> says me, anyway. That's me. Um... So, like, this just looks super scary now. I mean, yeah, I guess the Rook Drop is sometimes a threat, too. Or at least the gold temporarily protects against that Rook Drop. But, um, yeah, this this looks pretty critical. I don't know. Yeah, as you're pointing out. Um, I much prefer... Gota's chances there, but I guess there might be some funny business as he puts it. Um, so I take the knight. Uh, I take here. Yeah. So I just mess up in the worst way. It's kind of crazy just how bad my mess up is. I don't know what to do, but whatever it is, it's not what I did. If there is a right move, it's anything but what I did. Um, but I'm not sure what it is. Um... So what I chase this, which is maybe that's okay, but this leads to the trouble that I had in the game. Um, yep, yeah, you got greedy, I punished. But, um, yeah, the night drop here was clever. Um, so how is it that I messed this up? Um, yeah, this was such a bad idea. Well, yeah, 
I guess we'll give him the hat to show off stuff. But yeah, unless like somehow taking the knight mates, I don't think it's a good move. Because my knight by itself is not enough to do very much. Um, maybe it does mate. Maybe my position is so terrible that like it's just the one piece they need. It could be. Yeah, they get a lot of pieces. It's just so impressive how completely and utterly crushed my castle is at this point. That's just so hard to believe. But, yeah. Hmm. Like, theirs stood up to my attack. My king ran all over the board and still couldn't survive. Well, that's an interesting point. Um, yeah. It's so odd that my king is slightly safer in this position than anywhere else. That is truly bizarre. Yeah, well, yeah, there's not a mate there. But if there were, you could just take the knight anytime you want. So. Yeah. I forgot again. They wanted a knight in hand, and I just gave it to them. That is amazing. I figured that I wanted to give them a knight, because silvers and golds are much more scary pieces. Um, yeah, but here this tactic actually works. Uh, yeah, my position is collapsing. Um, it's just amazing how terrible my position is. Yeah, I'm, arguably my taking the knight was greedy, but I thought I was surviving this. Yeah. I was so convinced that I survived this. Well, I mean... What can I do? Is there anything I can do here? Because, like, anything I try gets me in severe trouble, right? Um, well, I mean, yeah, now I take that, so it's not exactly right there, but, um, um, why not? Well, maybe that works. Yeah, that works. So I was seeing stuff like this, and this is why I took the pawn. Um, right, and here... Um, yeah, I thought it was a skull drop. I did not see a clean way out of this. 
So, like, this attack is quite impressive. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And there's the mate. So, I think taking the pawn is best. Even though, like, um, it's clearly very painful. Um... Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, huh. I wonder... Oh, yeah, okay, this drop looks right. Yeah. Thank you for that observation. Daruma Gamma. Yes, so this seems to accelerate the tap the attack as well. There seems not to be any way out. Oh, never mind. I missed this. Um, so, yeah, some kind of gold drop looks correct. And bear in mind, if ever they need this knight, they can always do bishop takes knight to get it. But, yeah. Uh, there's just a lot of momentum there. So that's why I took the pawn. But, uh, yep. Oh, well, yeah, no, he's right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's awesome. There's no defense against that. Amazingly, I've not seen that pattern before, but I guess the reason you don't see this is because, like, most players build a castle. And I just didn't. So, um, that's the difference between my style and the style of a good player. <laughs> Um, wait, silver there? Really? What's the purpose of this? Um, let's double check. I guess we just continue. Oh, sorry. Wow, I'm super mated. Jeez. Wow, that's powerful. So, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, my castle falls over when there's a spring breeze. Maybe I should do something about that. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had a nice attack. It certainly sufficed. I was being a dum dum and I lost. So that happens. Uh yeah, so to his remark about the game being a blunderfest, it was a very one sided blunderfest where one player was making all the blunders. The other player may have made some mistakes, but in terms of blunder count, pretty clear what's going on. <laughs> um, 87. Wait, does this work? How does this work? Um, oh, I guess I have... Well, I have no... 
Yeah, now I can actually defend with a gold drop at 3-8. That's not quite there. Not that 87. Um, yeah, this silver drop doesn't do jack. So, wait. What did I miss here? Oh my goodness. I started to read this. Wait. Why are they saying this gold drop? Yeah, it's got to be that one, right? Yeah, and this is uh, the closest thing you have to back rank mate in Shogi. Uh, wait, the uh, king escapes. That's funny. Uh, that's close. Let's see how many different checkmates I missed. So, yeah. Yeah, and I just gave a non-response that just... Well, yeah, there's no way that I mate here. It's not even close. It's not even close to being close. So, yeah. I was trying to find a way to... I don't know what I was doing. I can make excuses, but like their attack clearly survives and mine does not. My knight check in front of my pawn and like all this did not add up at all. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I honestly, like, this is very one-sided. Like, super ultra one-sided. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Quick consideration on this opening. Double swinging rook strategy. Oh. Yeah, that that makes sense. So, yeah, this is a more flexible formation. I've been trying to figure that out forever, and now that makes so much more sense. Either go for that or don't close the diagonal. Okay. Usually I don't close the diagonal, but I've had so many terrible games with it open lately that I wanted to do something different. But no, that makes a lot of sense. Um, plus that way my rook is not in the way of my generals, so... That makes so much sense. Like, holy moly, that makes way too much sense. Right, and then we could plug this and develop at our leisure. Right. And then we could either transition to twin gold or try to find a way to get our king to some other formation, but also activate our rook and bishop eventually. Uh, especially the rook. So that makes a lot of sense. I've always wondered, like, this third file attack that he did is something I've done so many times on Shogi Wars, and I've not seen a good response to it. Right. Yeah. And he's pointing out this is typical strategy. 
against that attack. Of course, this can vary a lot, but... So... Yeah. That makes sense that I could do this. This... A clever way to arrange the pieces and keep things flexible. Um, all right, so we're both going to attack on the wings. That's so. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah, because the king's not on eight two, this is possible for us to transpose back into this kind of shape. Although we got the bishop behind the rook instead of the knight behind it, but cool. Yeah, that makes so much more sense than what I was doing. So there's no need to watch me suffer through a thousand games playing every possible bad strategy when we could try to play a good strategy. So our options are either play for this, putting the rook on an active line, getting pawns in hand, eventually having some kind of an attack, or leave the diagonal open and deal with the consequences as they come. Uh, yeah, I'm inclined to believe transport here, though. Yeah. I mean, sure, that's a very strong attack. Um. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'll take any kind of play that I can get. So, yeah, that's just, as an example, he's showing that if uh, Senta gives up a tempo, Gota can attack strongly. I might think this is a good, well... <laughs> I might think many things are good defenses. Um, hmm. This looks some... I don't know. I'm trying to remember if I've been shown this before or not by some other player. Um, but I might think this is a good defense, but it looks scary having the same second file open. Oh, they actually attack here? Jeez. What in the world? How in the world does this work? That's crazy. Well, I guess the silver supports this. So yeah, if Senta playing... Mukai Bisha, that is opposing rook, plays into this. Again, Sakin Bisha, which is third file rook, um, in this situation, because Senta's pieces are so disheveled, this attack is so strong. Yes. That's crazy. That is such a powerful attack out of nowhere. I'll go for a rapid Hymeno. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I'll consider that again. I should try that in, like, our tourney to master games and see if I can get better results here than I've gotten in the past. But yeah, leaving the diagonal open suddenly looks so much safer 
than trying to play safely. This is, yeah, I had no idea just how passive it is to give up that tempo closing the diag. I mean, I've played the other side of the position. I've played both sides of this, and usually I keep the diagonal open. Lately, I've been having a streak of negative results, losing about 60 to 70% of my games. So I wanted to try something different today. And I tried something different, and things went predictably, and it's okay. But yeah, I had no idea. If I like attacking, I should keep the diagonal open. And I do enjoy an attack now and then, don't I? Um. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to make excuses. I really don't. It behooves nobody for me to do such a thing. So yeah, I'll tell him I'll find time to read it. Because, yeah, those are good Kifu files. Oh! Very nice. That's very kind of you to share. Thank you very much, Abigail. He is so prepared for this game. <laughs> Never mind, but yeah, that's entirely fair. Yeah. yeah. I could do the same. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Go for a ra rapid high mino and bring the gold up to support the high mino. Yeah, I've done that several times. It's been successful. Apparently it's... I mean, I've gotten away with a lot of stuff on 81 Dojo and on Shogi Wars, because I'm only one Don. But that's good to know that um, rapid high mino is actually legitimate and not just something I just made up. So that's encouraging. Um, rapid Haimino against third foul rook. Rapid Yagra against second foul rook. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> nice. Um... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is just kind of a massacre. Um so well played. <laughs> uh, so that puts me solidly at one win, two losses. Uh, I think this shows what our American shogi experience, American amateur shogi experience is like. Um, at least right following this lockdown, um, there's not been as much opportunity to go out and visit a local shogi club, but also in my area there just surprisingly isn't an active one. Um, and I'm too busy working on like Lee shogi to try to participate in the local club as well. I'd rather write excellent software than master the game. But, uh, yeah, this is a fairly, very well conducted attack against my poorly conducted attack, my poorly... I played it a few things reasonably well, like I didn't... Uh, I didn't allow this castle to completely collapse... It was interesting that what he was looking for here was a knight and not a silver, as I thought. I thought he wanted a silver. Um, but yeah, apparently this is not the way he wanted to go. But yeah, maybe this is... Well, this could be interesting. Yeah. Should have considered this more. I got too greedy. Um... Okay. Yeah, let's see. 
Let me see what the comments are. Instead of dropping silver 5-5, five five, you had silver 8-4. If he ignores that I have silver 7-3. Or silver drop. Yeah, I saw that after I played. I even saw it before I played. I was just extremely panicking. Because I was greedy and not thinking clearly at all. Um, I thought that my king was safe. It clearly was not, if we look at the game. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this threatens the gold drop. And, like, I saw this, I'm like, this is not even close. But you're telling me it, it is close. If he ignores it that, like, that's an actual threat. Um, now I saw also that, like, well, okay, of course he could just respond to the threat. I'm sorry, not that. I need to calm down a little bit, don't I? Um, boy, I need to calm down. Yeah, double sack on 8-2. And then rook drop on 8 Oh my gosh. Jeez. I mean, yeah, I was looking at, like, double sack, A2 double sack, 6-2. Uh, looking at bishop takes knight, this sack. Um, but mostly looking at these two sacks, and I'm just, like, completely blind. Um, but yeah, if he does react and prevent me from dropping on 7-3... I don't have enough to support a legitimate attack here. So I've been thinking about, I don't know, he could even drop this here. Wait, I mean, that's murky at best, and probably not even murky. Like, my reading here sucks, is my point. Is I need to practice more Sumit and not just look at this position. Because this is an unusual position where I'm... Very close to getting mated, and he's got lots of ways to defend, but he might not defend accurately. Um, let's see, yeah, there's stuff to consider here. Yeah, this knight advance was weird because it didn't do anything unless there was some tactic here somehow, but like. Uh, other than that, oh, I'm sorry, the knight advance allowed him to continue attacking some way, but, like, it's still weird. Um, this pawn drop was a little bit weird, but, yeah, like, clearly he's got a very strong attack. If he plays accurately, this game should be his. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is how you'd swindle on Shogi Wars with the silver drop. Yeah. That's another way to learn Suma is not, like, the academic sense of, like, what works in clean games, but what works in street games. Um, if you've ever seen the movie Searching for Bobby Fischer, you know that, like, the protagonist, Josh Waitzkin, some kid, goes to the park. And this is where he first developed appreciation for the game, but also this is where he learned some street chess, like, how to make combinations and creative games and look for unusual circumstances. Yeah, and so Shogi Wars would be like, how do we make the cheapo that might work here? Whereas like a textbook will tell you, okay, here's this position, and if you have this exact position, you will checkmate with this sequence. And that's cool. And then you can back up and say, well, okay, leading up to this, we can make all these threat mates, and that's cool too. But yeah. Yeah, that's fine. But either way, very nicely played, Abigail. Um, good luck in the future rounds in this event. Hope we all enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.